At the core of probability distribution lies the binomial distribution, often regarded as the mother of the normal distribution. This powerful concept of binomial distribution was introduced by Swiss mathematician Jacob Bernoulli in his outstanding work Ars Conjectandi, published posthumously in 1713, eight years after his death. It still fascinates many that how does a discrete distribution like the binomial distribution, which deals with finite separate outcomes, transform into smooth continuous curve of the normal distribution. And to understand this, we need to explore the binomial distribution itself, its characteristics like its PMF, probability mass function, its mean, its variance, and then only we can understand that how it connects to the normal distribution. So let's deep dive into the world of binomial distribution. Binomial distribution applies to the experiments with exactly two possible outcome. No more, no less. Exactly two possible outcome. These outcome can be framed in many ways. Yes or no, true or false, on and off, one or zero. You decide which one is success and which one is failure based on the different scenarios. Let's take an example to make it clearer. Now suppose, imagine a doctor has developed a revolutionary new medicine for cancer. Hypothetically, the medicine has a probability of success that's 80%, regardless of age, gender or health condition. So in this case, the probability of success is 0 0.80 and probability of failure is 1 minus 0 0.80, that is 0 0.20. Now suppose the doctor tests the medicine on five patients. Now look into these questions very carefully and tell what is the probability that exactly three of those five people will survive? What is the probability that all five patients will survive? And some more question like this. And I would recommend to pause the video and take a moment to think deeply about the solution before proceeding. You can answer all these questions with the common sense distribution, which is binomial distribution, or by just using and or rule of the probability. Let's do the maths for finding only three persons surviving out of five patients. And I would suggest you to solve for two persons surviving out of five patients. First step, find the possible combination. We need to determine how many different ways we can choose three survivor from the five patients. These combination could include any group of three from five, right? For instance, Tony, Robin, Ella survive while Loki and Chris wouldn't. Second, Tony, Robin, Loki survive while Ella and Chris wouldn't. And so and so forth. The number of ways to select three survivors from five patient is calculated as 10. And you can see here on the screen that we have manually written all the possible scenarios. However, the simplest way to know all the possible combination is use the combination formula directly, that is NCX, where N is five here, x is 3 and this will give you 5 factorial upon 3 factorial into 2 factorial and that is equal to 10 again. So instead of listing all the combination manually, you can simply use the combination formula. Park this formula as we will need it later. Second step, let's calculate the probability of one specific combination. For example, suppose Tony, Robin, Loki survived while Carl and Chris couldn't. The probability of this happening is 0 0.8 into 0 0.8 into 0 0.8 into 0 0.2 into 0 0.2, which is just multiplying the probability of survival of Tony, Robin and Loki and multiplying the probability of failure for Carl and Chris. Now, why multiplying? Because of and rule of probability. You can also write it as 0 0.8 raised to the power 3 into 0 0.2 raised to the power 2. Now find the probability of other outcome. And that is also 0 0.8 raised to the power 3 into 0 0.2 raised to the power 2. Now if we have 10 such combination 
and 0 0.8 raised to the power 3 into 0 0.2 raised to the power 2 is the probability of each possible scenario then the net probability of three successes if doctor trial the medicine on five patient is just adding them all because there are 10 scenario possible and I can write it as 10 into 0 0.8 raised to the power 3 into 0 0.2 raised to the power 2. If you generalize this equation, then 10 is 5C3. And now further generalize this equation and instead of 5 and 3, replace it with n and x, where n is the total number of trial and x is the number of successes. Replace 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 with the probability of successes and failure. And that is how intuitively we get our probability mass function of binomial distribution, which is ncx p to the power x q to the power n minus x, where n is the number of trial and p and q are the probability of successes and failure. x is the number of successes for which we were trying to find the probabilities. Now you can use this probability mass function formula to any number of trial, any number of successes and any probability of successes and you will get the probability of the successes as the output. It only need three input n, x and p. So we have completed the probability mass function of binomial distribution.